Hey, I have a good video for you today. YouTube's telling me I should paint a cloud. Okay, clouds are fun. They're, they're kind of a challenge. Let's do this and see how it turns out. And if you stick with me through the whole video, I have a bonus technique at the back end. Let's do this. I'm gonna kind of drop in some color up here on a, for sky, and we'll just kind of create a, an irregular shape along this edge. Come back up this direction so we got a nice little cloud edge and then clouds also I have a lot of water in here so I'm going to sop up a little bit of that we'll just create a nice looking corner right there okay unload my brush I have a kind of a semi-damp brush i'm going to just come up, come over here and i'm going to let some of that color you got to think of clouds as round they have form and shape and i'm going to keep some soft edges i'm going to come up here and just soften up some of these So, right up here, just soften these things up. Okay, so, clouds are kind of a pain in the butt. I'm gonna get just right. I, I practice these quite a bit with before I put them, if I've got clouds in a scene, I'll practice them quite a bit. So this is now a dry brush coming into the wet areas, right? So, all right, so it's all very wet right now. So I'm gonna try to get a little more form. I'm gonna try to get another layer of, of fluffiness in here. All right, come on down, come right down along that side. Okay. Soften that out. Nice, soft, irregular shapes. Lots of water, soft edges. And I'm just going to keep working until I get a sense of the cloud form. Keep dropping it in there. Just lift a little more over here. Still damp, so lots lots of movement can happen. So you gotta be careful not to overwork clouds. It's easy to do. I know I tend to do that, so I'm still developing cloud chops, so alright, so now I'm gonna just introduce just a smidge of a warm tone some of this burnt umber get this kind of a steel tonal range in it and we'll just kind of drop some of that in just for a little more color depth and density okay and we'll just throw that in i'm going to sop it up a little bit more okay drop it in sop it up And then I'm just going to try to kind of feather that out so we get a little bit of a cloud fading off into the horizon. A little more of it up here. All right, so the cloud has dried. So stage one blocking is dried. So I'm gonna come in with a thinner brush, maybe get a little more structure a little more detail in in kind of some of the inner forms of the clouds so i'm going to look for some of those really dark spots and i'm going to be kind of painting in reverse so come in here and now just try to get maybe that layer of shape right there 
drop in a little thin wash and then I'm going to feather it out with a damp brush and I'm trying to have a sharp versus soft edge and I might bounce around just soften it around I'm going to have some sharp spots and some spots that aren't all right so let's come up let's do this one come around down here like this and there we go so I'm going to soften up this side of it make it nice this is a, a little thin glaze just laying it in there you can still see the shapes from stage one in there and I'm going to come over and bounce around and soften just little touches here and there. There we go. Everything dries lighter. Keep that in mind when you're painting. All right, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna maybe like this might be a little angry thunderhead coming in. So I'm gonna come down. Now I'm gonna start. And now I reversed it, so I'm painting the opposite side. And then I'll feather this out. Take it, have that darker, angrier, greenish blue towards the horizon. Then I'll come here and we'll just soften this up a little bit. Okay. Anyway, it takes practice. Keep working on your clouds. Do a do a sheet of them, right? Don't just do one cloud and think, oh, they're hard and I'm going to give up. Just jump in there and do a bunch of them until you can do them in your sleep. So, all right. So this one's coming along. I would stop and leave this to dry again and probably quit messing with it at this point, depending on the scene I was drawing. Once this dries, I'll maybe draw in a a nice little horizon down here have a little little thing this is a sky sky heavy little scene so all right so as that dries we'll see how it goes all right so my little cloud scape is dried and I'm gonna work in a little horizon line down here so I want to mix up some yellow ochre, fairly thick mixture of yellow ochre, a little wheat field at the base. All right, and we'll just drop that in. Again, just a nice quick swipe along here. A little thicker, there we go. So we have that uh, color that I laid down kind of acting as a nice undertone. Okay. All right, and then as that's drying, I'm just gonna come in and get a little bit of this burnt umber. A little more sepia there. And just a smidge of ultramarine. Classic combination though, I'll do a nice little horizon line, tree line. We'll do a, drop in a little tree line right there. All right. And I've got a little movement happening, the tree line into the, into the uh, wheat field. I like that. This is a coffee-ish heading towards milk consistency. All right, cool. So we got a nice little, little action there. If you don't like that much of a spread, you can soften that out. Just uh, the, biggest, the biggest problem you might have is just overworking. And I've seen it, and I remember doing it myself. I've seen students where they work it so hard that the paper begins to pill and ball up and once it does that you might as well start over anyway so you're definitely trying too hard on it so i'm just adding a little more saturation in there 
and the, all of that needs to dry. I really don't have anywhere else to work right at the moment. I guess what I could do, I'm gonna add a little bird in. I'm gonna add a little bird. Let's see here. Now, here's where I'm gonna get a really thick mixture. And this is phthalo blue and some burnt umber. And I'm just going to drop in a little bird, maybe. We'll throw him in, maybe. Let's see here. We'll throw him in about, I'm feeling the bird needs to be about right here. So I'm going to get a swoosh for a wing, swoosh for a wing, pull it out. There we go, there we go. And get the body just right. And you know what? I screwed it up. So, what do you do when you screw it up? Get some water. We'll just a little soften it up. Didn't like that one. That one sucked. Let's get another one. We'll move locations. How about right here? All right. Get the bird. Get the bird. There we go. Boom. There we go. There we go, perfect. Now let's get the other one. And they're gonna be circling something. So let's swap it this way. Come on, there we go. Oh, perfect. There, I'm just drawing little U shapes. All right, there we go. Get that swooping action going on. So, and just to follow the standard rule, always have three things. So let's see here. Let's throw this one right here, right here. There we go. He's a little further back. There we go. So we got three nice little vultures <laughs> circling around. All right. And I'm going to get a little more of that brown. I'm going to hit that horizon line just a little bit more. A little more saturation. There we go. There's that nice tree line. All right. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Good little study. So, yeah, get some, find some pictures, shoot some pictures, invent your scene. That's what I did here. Just uh, play around with it. Now, if I would want a little brighter foreground, I'm going to get a small flat here. Let's say I want maybe a a line towards that horizon line. I want to just lift out some of that color and maybe even just pull it out so at an angle. All right, so you can kind of see I can fix, pull up some detail. This is just a damp brush and that area is still very damp. This is where you can definitely cause yourself some problems. That paper is beginning to pill right in that spot but I'm just adding a little touch of highlight right in there all right my last little thing I just wanted to get one more little pass of really dark right up here right on the edge I don't want it in the tree but I want it right there on that highlight area I picked out I'm just gonna pop it in there and just touch around a few things and maybe even there we go so there's my little clouded scene try another one let's do a horizontal one this time all right, get a little more blue. Nice big saturated. Now, here's a, a flat brush version. All right. So, and you can also, if you wet down a little bit of the paper irregularly. All right, let's try it with a flat brush now. This is a good coffee consistency, saturated blue. All right, so... I'm going to work with mainly this tip here. So I'm going to come in 
and just drop in that color and it's interacting with that clear water that I placed down all right I'm gonna get a little thinner mixture this time maybe a little bit with burnt sienna a little different color and we'll do the same thing get those colors to meld a little bit got a sharp edge I need to I'm going to kind of soften that up a little bit there we go there we go all right And then clouds. I like to leave those little peekaboo white pieces of paper. Also, like I'm just softening up some of those crisp edges. Come over here, soften those up. They're subtle. I don't like to overwork them. I'm not that confident with my clouds, so I try to keep them fairly simple and straightforward. I'm going to drop in more color as it comes down to the horizon. And as you approach the horizon, I'm going to work in a little bit of the dirt and haze heading towards the horizon. Right in there. Just soften that up. So we get another little cloud. So if it's, you know, if the clouds aren't your main subject matter in the piece, you know, you need a nice quick looking little cloud. You can, you can do it with a mop. You can do it with a flat brush. So I hope this helps. Hey, if you like this video, give me a like and hit the subscribe button so you'll be alerted when I post more tutorials. Thanks for watching.